Hey, Grind here, and we're back with the 13th century sword. It's a type 13 hand and a half. Uh, it was a transitional sword when they were going up to long swords. Uh, it's quite blade heavy. Uh, it works really well hand and a half or one handed if you want a tremendous swing from, let's say, behind a shield. So that's what they were going to, more tapered for thrusting. People were wearing lots of mail, and I'm sure they were doing some niche hunting, and also I'm sure they were cutting as well. The way this blade is, is designed in our testing, we've seen it cut through all kinds of materials. Today, instead of using a one-handed sword, which isn't quite fair, like an army sword or an early century Viking sword or a migrational era sword, like I did in the other videos I said I was biased to, we're gonna be using this sword. Later, 13th century sword, uh, similar shape, uh, not quite as broad, but balanced about the same, just hand and a half. Very similar to the katana. We've got the katana back, and uh, yes, I very much uh, love the katana. It's a, it's a good blade. Uh, it cuts a lot of times when the flatter blades will not cut on, let's say, the width of an abdomen. Today we have a slightly smaller target uh, to give it a more realistic idea of you hitting in an area where you're not just hitting across, because that's kind of unusual to be hitting across here trying to slice, but the katana's actually sliced through and it leased up, we think, to a quarter inch, maybe a little deeper, through lots of fabric with 15 layers. Today, we're doing 32 layers. That's a lot more material. Now, since the material is not historical uh, linen, but it's a, it's a type of material very similar to linen, we went with 32 instead of 30. 30 was usually what they'd wear as standalone gamuts, and yes, it would be stitched together and sometimes have some padded material to allow more bounce because the stitching kind of compacts it. They don't want a big thick layer out like this. Although that might be helpful, it would get in the way. So uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and do our tip shot with this sword, hand and a half, which is a fair test, on a, a amount of gamut that I don't even know if we can penetrate. And we're going to use this section of the katana and try to cut from the same angle two-handed as well, see if we can slice into the bottle, see which one does better. I think this is a much fairer test, and uh, I'm, I'm really like to see. I'd like to see the katana perform just as well. But let's see what it All does. All right, we're back with the katana. We had a bunch of people that said the katana that we were biased on the katana towards the uh, Viking sword, or the migrational uh, period sword of the uh, uh, Germanic tribes used, or the old Spatha design. No, we weren't biased to it. It's just that, that was the one that cut the deepest. Most of our cuts with this blade, although it's curved and we slice, even the video where we did use it two-handed. And we even told you that it cut easier in the fabric by just draw cutting. Uh, due to the curvature, the single bevel, the very rigid back of the blade, it has a very thick uh, profile. No distal taper hardly at all at the back of the edge, just at the actual blade itself, which is a very long blade, a uh, very long wedge. So yeah, it cuts very, very well for slicing, but you have to be much closer to do that. And uh, you know, I mean, basically to do that type of full slice with both arms, you have to bring it in. But uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to try to do a cut. We've got a uh, more narrow surface. It's not as wide as the entire torso. It's about maybe this much compared to it. So that gives us a little less surface because you know, it makes it easier to cut. But we also have 32 layers of cloth. And we picked a cloth we think should be very difficult to cut through. And we want to see how it fares. We want to see if it actually makes it into the bottle. But we know that we have not said one time that this blade doesn't cut through uh, cloth and fabric that well. We never said that. Which does, we were just saying on that wide surface that it probably only went in about a quarter of an inch at the most. I mean, we may be wrong. There's some compression there. It might have went in maybe an inch, but if it only went in a quarter inch, like we're assuming, that's not a very, it's a very long cut, but not a very deep cut. That's what we were trying to say, where the tip shot was going in, you know, three or four inches, but not as wide. You know, more like a kind of a combination thrust and cut, uh, uh, thrust and cut at the same time, penetrated it. But it's very difficult with the Gannison. We'll see what happens. I'm going to try to cut through this. I think it's going to be very, very difficult. Nope. You uh, got through some, but... I don't know how far I cut, but I didn't make it. You almost made it, but not far enough. And I even used more of a tip shot without meaning to. I mean, I'll say this. You got pretty damn close. Yeah. Oh, let's check it out. But you didn't get any... You didn't get any uh, we went through quite a few layers, but there are layers intact over the actual material and it didn't actually cut into it. So 30, 32 layers of this material, which is a very light cloth, they would have used much coarser, tighter woven cloth. We're using modern fabrics and trying to replicate the canvasing effect. This does have bounce, that helps, but no, we didn't make it through with the katana on this rig today. 
We might have to lighten our gamison. But All right. We're here with the Type 13 by Oak Shop Typology. It's a hand and a half, 13th century sword. Uh, they were getting slightly blade heavy, longer, uh, more distal taper, more ta uh, actual, uh, uh, more narrow taper, not as broad at the back for a little while there. And you have a hand and a half. This is so if you were fighting with lots of mail on, like full mail coverage, you might want to put your shield, sling it over your back. You might have a busted shield. You might throw it down and you would use this to get extra power in your cuts. And I'm sure that would help in blade fencing, thrusting, much like a longsword. It's a precursor to a longsword. It's a hand and a half. War sword type uh, idea. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to try a cut. Like we know works normally with the tip to cut into it, see if we can actually cut through that many layers. The katana was not able to do it. Let's see if the uh, Type 13 can uh, pull it off. Well, what's the verdict? Did you make it? Uh, we actually cut the bottle, but with 32 layers. You nicked it. I nicked it, but I actually made it to see bottle. Whereas the actual uh, katana didn't make it through all the layers. We could try more of a tip cut with the katana if you like, but I'm just looking at this going, wow. Wouldn't have killed the guy, but we actually made it through that many layers. That's quite scary. I didn't even think you could make it through 32 layers. So obviously it was something we did by using the extra hand to uh, control the balance and get more, more slicing through. That's impressive, man. I'm glad I picked that sword. I love it. Oh, very nice. Way outperformed what I thought it was going to do. got a little trickle of water, but not much. It's a very minor cut. You wouldn't be dying from that one. Although you would be, uh, maybe more of a cut than I think. Turn, turn the bottle more towards us. Oh, what it is, is we hit on the curvature of this bottle. So we sliced into the very corner of the bottle. Well, it'd be like sliced into the corner of your abdomen. Yes. So we actually do have a cut. I'm seeing it now. There is an actual cut that is probably... Oh, let's just take that off. This is worth looking at. Look, way more than what we thought. Come over and check this out. I didn't. I thought we barely cut it because of how well the bottle sealed up. This, that's a cut. We made it through. Check that out. Sorry, I, I, I should always examine stuff before we assess it, but that's a good, uh, about an inch in, if you look at the curvature of the bottle. So we got a good inch in cut. This guy would be bleeding out, and if nothing was done, you'd have this there to kind of compress the wound, some of the fiber could probably be in it. But if he started bleeding out profusely from this, uh, it could make him lightheaded, and he would eventually be uh, forced to leave the fight, depending on where it's at, or uh, faint. If it hit an artery, which there are some arteries in some areas, depending on where this gambeson would be at, which I don't think would be in your abdomen right here, or probably a muscle area you could hit, or some flesh and fatty area. If it was an actual artery, then yes, he'd probably die. Okay, sorry we have limited materials. I would redo this test immediately, but we have no way of doing it. Uh, the katana cut through uh, most of the layers. I'd say we have a good, uh... to be honest, the katana only cut through about half the layers. That's what I'm feeling. I got about half as much behind. It went through about half the layers and did not make it to the bottom. So uh, I'd say about 16 layers that the katana went through. And I hit with the tip portion of the sword, two-handed, the same way I did with the, uh, the actual 13th century sword. With the 13th century sword, I've noticed something. When I reanalyzed the cut, I meant to hit more in the center like I did with the katana. I hit towards the edge. So as we sliced in and, and it kicked the bottle this way, it stopped cutting and turned, right? Well. We might have gotten a longer cut, and this may be deeper, because I'm assuming I'm looking at the cut this way as about one inch in, right? But if you turn it this way and had more bottle, we actually got what we've been getting in the other videos. We got about a two inch cut in if you look at it that way, and it might have went a little bit further and came out. That's if we had more bottle. And remember this bottle set up here is lighter than what we normally use. It's not as broad. So it's taking a lot more speed in the cut to do that type of penetration. So I'm very impressed. I'm looking at how we went clean through all 32 layers. And up here, we made it through half. Now, as I said, the katana's bad? No. 
It's just in this particular test, this is how I perform, but I do think the shape of the blade is making a difference. I really, really do. It appears the shape of the blade is making a difference and the way it's used. So, I hope you enjoyed our videos. Uh, be sure and like the video if you like this video. Uh, be sure and subscribe to our channel. Tell people about us. Go by Patreon and uh, give, us, give us a monthly donation if you can afford to. It will really help us out. Uh, it's uh, www.patreon.com slash Thran. Uh, you can also uh, donate through PayPal if you like. Uh, and that's uh, Thane Thran at uh, uh, yahoo.com, which is actually the PayPal ID. And you can send us an email letting us know what you'd like to do with the funds. Because we'll test whatever you like. If you ask us, we'll try to figure out a way to do it and set it up and test it if we can afford to do it with the funds available. Also, if you want to donate any kind of weapons, or arms, or armor for us to test, or you want to suggest anything to test, you can, of course, you do that for free on the thing to rent a, a, a YouTube channel, Boat Crew channel. Uh, give us suggestions on there and interact with us. But you can go ahead and do that as well. We'll also take donations for that and see what we can figure out. If we can test out an old technique from one of the treaties, the manuals, we'll do that. But I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, I hope you found it as interesting as I did. And uh, Farvel.